At times, a boiler tube or tubes are removed to determine conditions within the boiler at regular overhaul periods or for inspection. The tube selected for removal should be the oldest tube in service determined from the machinery history and boiler record sheet. If a tube, however, shows evidence of distortion and bulging, burning, or other external defects, then that tube should be removed in order to determine the general condition within the boiler. Another instance of the need to remove a tube, a rupture or heavy corrosion and pitting. When an exploring block of tubes is to be removed by a repair ship or yard activity, the cut is made 8 or 10 inches above the water drum so that the section adjacent to the drum may be preserved intact. But in removing tubes for inspection or because of defect, the first cut is made just above the water drum. The tools necessary for this procedure are an air hammer and a flat chisel. Be sure the chisel is sharp. To avoid damage to other tubes in the event the air hammer slips, bend a piece of heavy gauge sheet metal behind the tube to be removed. At the location of the cut, leave the tube exposed for the cutting tool. See that the line is cleared of moisture. And the air hose is properly connected to the air supply. Now place the tool so that the flat of the chisel rests on the water drum. When starting the cut, be sure the gun is held firmly against the cutting tool. Press the trigger until the tool begins the cut and apply pressure gradually. Continue the cut until the tube is completely severed. A word of warning. When nearing the end of the cut, ease up pressure on the trigger to prevent the tool from flying and perhaps damaging other tubes. With the cut completed, remove the protective sheet metal and work the tube free from the tube bank. Next, remove the stub of tube end from the water drum. This can be done by using a doll-edged chisel or backing out tool which forces the stub down into the water drum where it can be retrieved through a manhole. Your next step is to remove the upper tube end from the steam drum tube sheet. Here are the tools you'll need. A flat chisel and a round nose gouge. Upon entering either steam or water drum, be sure to remove all loose articles from your person to prevent their being dropped into the boiler tubes. As a safety precaution, whenever working inside a boiler, have a shipmate standing by to render assistance if necessary, as well as to pass tools in and out. In addition, also, be sure that all valves on the boiler are closed, wired, and tagged to prevent accidental opening. Throughout this operation, the hazard of damage to the tube sheet is great. Therefore, you will need to exercise the greatest care in handling the tools to prevent scoring the tube sheet. With the flat chisel in the gun, split the belled end of the tube end at two places, about three-quarters of an inch apart. Start slowly in order to maintain control over the gun.
but be sure to halt the cut before the chisel touches the tube sheet. Now use the round nose gouge to cut two grooves inside the tube at the marked points. Be careful to hold the gun and gouge parallel to the tube wall. Start each cut about 3 sixteenths of an inch from the outside edge of the bell tube. Otherwise, the tool may plow through the bell into the tube sheet. Be sure to start the cut lightly until the tool has wedged into the steel. Note that the sharp edge of the gouge rides almost parallel to the tube so that at no time will all the metal of the tube wall thickness be cut. In fact, the cut should be only about half of the tube wall thickness, a depth sufficient to permit the tube to loosen within the tube sheet. Now, with a dull-edged chisel, raise the piece of tube end between the cuts from its seat and curl it back into the tube until the curl goes through and beyond the tube sheet. Never let the tool touch the tube seat. Even a slight scratch can make it difficult to obtain a perfect seal within the new tube. Place the tool against the curled down end of the tube and force the tube out of the tube sheet. The tube can now be removed from the bank of tubes. Whenever it is necessary to renew tubes in the A row, the corresponding tubes in the B row should also be removed regardless of condition. This eliminates the necessity of removing a recently renewed A row tube to gain access to an older B-row tube that may soon fail. If the tube has been removed for inspection, it must be properly prepared for examination. Cut the tube into convenient lengths for shipping, with each length marked clearly for ease in reassembly, identifying the boiler, the tube location in the boiler, and the part of the tube from which the section was taken. If a tube fails and conditions are such that the boiler cannot be taken off the line long enough for removal of the tube, or a spare tube of the right size and curvature is not available, then the tube must be plugged. If no hole exists in the tube wall, pierce the tube to prevent pressure building up within the tube during operation of the boiler. Next, clean the interiors of the tube ends. Then remove all scale, burrs, oil, or other foreign matter from the steel plugs used to seal the tube. Insert the small end of the plug into the tube end. With a three or four pound copper maul, tap the plug snugly into place taking care that the plug is driven evenly with the drum. Plug the other end of the tube the same way. If the end is in a header, work through a handhole. Beware, however, of driving the plugs in too tightly. Strike the plug several blows, just enough to see that they stay in place. At the first opportunity, however, a failed tube should be removed for replacement.